Building and debugging .NET apps on Linux is a lot more enjoyable when you're using Visual Studio Code. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to continue our foray into .NET Core on Linux by taking a look at how to use Visual Studio Code to build applications and even debug them. Yeah. So in the last episode, we you know we built a simple .NET app and we just used the the built-in text editor. But I'm a Visual Studio developer. I'm used to having things like IntelliSense and the ability to, to debug my applications. So Visual Studio Code is a great solution for that. That's cross-platform and has good support for C# Sharp and .NET. Uh, so let's get that installed and just take a look at what that how that works. So when we go to code.visualstudio.com here, there's an option to download. Uh, the app. Uh, we're going to select the, the Debian version here, which is what Ubuntu is based off of. So we simply download that. This is probably in the app repository anyway, right? Um, it is in the store. There's this concept of, of a store. Um, but I, I'm just going to stick with the Oh, the recommended from the All right. Microsoft site. Oh, uh, Microsoft says do it, we'll do it. Yep. Never yeah, going to get fired that way. It does auto update and everything anyway, so. Where did that go? I downloaded it. Right. Pot that was fast. Oh, oh it was there. My problem is I don't know how to use Firefox. I have the same problem when I'm on a Mac. I don't know how to use the how to use Safari at all. So once we have that file downloaded, I believe we can just double click it and install. It does require you to enter your password correctly. I'd like to apologize for the hardcore people out there that uh, Dave is not using the command line for all of this. <laughs> Okay, we'll go back to the command line in a second here. Okay, so we we should have code installed here now, I believe. There it is, Visual Studio Code. Right, the way I'm going to open this is actually to go into the project that has my, or the folder that has my project here, and I'm just going to do a code dot. I believe I can launch it that way. Okay. That opens up that folder uh, in Visual Studio Code for me. Nope, don't want to do that. OK, once we have this installed and open here, we're going to need a couple of packages and a couple of extensions. And what's nice about Visual Studio Code, one of the nice things is it recognizes the packages or the extensions that you need, that you probably need. So it's telling me the C-sharp extended is recommended for this file type. Yes, please. We'll go ahead and install that. And that's the one that's going to give me that IntelliSense-like behavior that will do, you know, the, the autocomplete on when I when I hit Control Space or as I'm typing method mm -hmm. names. And it's also downloading the .NET Core debugger for me. So I'm not sure. Like OmniSharp is self sharp as a separate project for providing IntelliSense around yeah. .NET. Do they end up using that in Visual Studio as well? I know they shell out to some external process for doing syntax highlighting and suggestions. Is it the same thing? I don't think so. I think this is kind of a, well, actually, I don't know anymore. I know it wasn't like that before, but it's possible that uh, it's possible they're using the same code now. The thing that made me think that is this Razor language server as well that just got installed, that it gives you the IntelliSense behavior for uh, for Razor files. Right. It's possible that, yeah, they are using some of the same code there now, but I know originally that wasn't the case. There was something else that just popped up here that yeah. says that required assets to build and debug are missing. So this is, again, uh, Visual Studio Code is kind of walking me through adding the things I need to be able to run and debug my app using Visual Studio Code as opposed to running it through the command line. So I click yes for that. And now if I go to my files here, I should see some, some new things. So there's a .vs code folder. And in there, there's a, two files. There's a launch.json and a task.json. 
So the tasks is the one that uh, that basically just says which command line commands are going to get executed when I press whatever the keystrokes are to do a build. Um, and then there's there's another one for a watch. A well, watch is interesting. I hadn't noticed that one before or hadn't really paid attention. What's that doing, Simon? Is that actually watching my files and recompiling? Yeah, I would expect it to. Need. Yeah, we should try it. It's kind of, kind of an yeah. odd uh, command line application. It is a little bit for a command line app. Um, and then there's the launch settings, which is uh, when I go to do a debug. So I can uh, launch it at the console, or I can attach to an existing .NET Core process, and it will bring up a, a dropdown of all the .NET Core processes for me. So let's just see how, how we actually use those two files that it created for me. First of all, let's just see if we have our IntelliSense here. So if I type console, start typing console, you can see it suggests console for me. And if I hit dot, it gives me all the all the things that exist on, on console, all the methods and properties that I can interact with. Uh, that's one of the things that I love about .NET is that we we have really good support for what traditionally we call IntelliSense. I don't know if that's exactly what we call it in the Visual Studio Code world, but it's a nice thing to have. And when it's not there, it makes it kind of hard to code when you've been used to it for a long time. Yeah, you definitely become reliant upon it. And we also have, for example, inside this str interpolated string, we have that uh, IntelliSense here too, and I can access the variables that I have defined inside this scope. Okay, so let's try debugging this. So if I wanted to debug and just kind of walk through this as uh, as it was running, I could hit set some breakpoints here. And then I should be able to go into the debug and run section here and just hit start debugging and it should launch my app. And then we'll hit this breakpoint right away and we can start inspecting our process as it's running. And there we go. So it started the process for me here. And it, I should be able to just hit continue, goes to the next line, continue again. And now it's sitting there waiting for me to enter something. So I'm going to say, it's Dave again. Oh, I did not enter that in the right place, did I? I'm not typing in the right place. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure exactly where you end up going to type here. Yeah. I'm trying to tell them, but I don't know if that, I don't think oh, that's not it. Place. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I suspect that the debug terminal is probably set up to allow for interpretation of variables yes. and those sorts of things. Yeah. And now it just disappeared. I'm not sure where it went. I guess. Oh, no, it's still running. Yeah, I don't know. It's a mystery. Where did my console go? So it's possible I picked a bad example here <laughs> to try to debug into. Okay, so another way that I could run this is to actually run my application here. So I could say .NET run. My process is running now, and I could actually go here, and there was that other uh, right. item in the launch settings that allowed us to attach to an existing process. So here, I should be able to attach to a process. It tells me the ones that are running. Uh, I only have one that's running, so it makes it easy to pick it. And now I should be able to set breakpoints again. Might not necessarily have been the process. No. Let's try that again. Run. So it might be called something else. So a bunch of code processes there. That... But I don't, yeah, I think it could be .NET run, but if .NET run might not be the actual process. Um, if you go over to your terminal, I just hit Control Z. Uh, and then you can just do like a PS in this terminal. Uh, so it's probably 13663. And then just you can just do a, an FG to bring it back to the foreground. So if you go if you go back, you have to kill this one, yeah. and then just do just type FG to bring the process back to the foreground. Yeah. Okay. So now you should be able to attach to thirteen 
There, there it go. is. Okay. Thank you, Simon. No problem. I ran into this system to see the dead game effect. Okay, so now. There we go. I hit that breakpoint, and under my local variables, we can see the name, we can see the args that were passed in. I should be able to actually change this to some other value if I wanted to, and then continue and see the output. Yeah. Is Dave 2. The Dave was much better than Dave 1. <laughs> so that is in a nutshell. Getting started with Visual Studio Code on Linux, uh, getting that good old IntelliSense and debugging support. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on this episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, and uh, pipe all of your money to us. <laughs> thanks. See you on the next episode.